Hey you guys, Matt Allen here. Welcome back to Tactical Bassin. Today we are talking about where bass go at the end of winter. The very tail end of winter, the earliest part of spring, the very beginning of that pre-spawn. Where do bass go? Where do they move? We know they leave their winter haunts. Where are they headed? And most importantly, how do you catch them? Now we've talked about where these fish go in the pre-spawn in years past. We've covered this exact subject, but today we are going much more in depth. What I wanna do with you is we're actually going to break it down by style of fishery or the style of the lake. So we're going to talk about natural lakes, rivers or deltas where the water's flowing, highland reservoirs and lowland reservoirs. Those four types of water bodies cover everything that you can encounter. The concept is the same, but it varies a little bit in each style. Now pond guys, you're not being left out. A lot of times pond guys think that the information doesn't apply to them. I'm talking directly to you. Listen to the information in the other four, but decide which one sounds the most like your pond. If your pond doesn't have a dam, it's fairly shallow, it's going to behave like a natural lake. If it's got steep sides with a big dam on it, it's going to respond like a highland reservoir. Okay, so this information will apply to everybody. Let's take it from the top. Which one should we start with? Let's begin with a natural lake. A natural lake, the fish have the ability to make the largest migration. So recapping winter, essentially in winter, the fish pull to deep water. They get on those outside edges. They love to be around rock. That's the stuff we've been fishing for months. The fish love to get in those low spots. In a natural lake, they'll get out on the breaks and down in the depressions. On your reservoirs, they pull to those rocky points, those steep breaks, the narrow sections in the lake. Anywhere where the food is going to naturally gather, they don't have to move far to eat it. So now as we're just getting into spring, because we know the spawn is coming, but it's way down the road. I'm actually jumping ahead with this video because we've got this beautiful day. It's gorgeous here. It's up 10 or 15 degrees from the last few days. Our air temps are awesome. It's nice out. And that got me thinking about the guys in the southern half of the country. You guys are a little bit ahead. So I wanna jump ahead so you don't get the information too late. Northern guys, you're a little bit behind. This is coming early, but it's for everyone. So back to it. Let's talk about the natural lake first. Here we go. The fish in the natural lakes, if you've got some steeper walls, they've pulled to that deep rock. They're sitting on the ledges, the places you've seen us fish late, lately, down on the breaks. If you don't have that, they've pulled out offshore if you've got that slow taper to the bottom, not a lot going on, no big points, no drop offs, they pull right out to the center of the hollows and they're just sitting out there. They're just sitting on the bottom. Well, now you start getting that warming, that sun comes out, water temp starts rising a few degrees. These fish are ultimately headed to the backs of bays, to the backs of coves, up into the shallows to spawn. So where do they go first? In a natural lake, they are going to follow the easiest route back to the shallows. If there are points in your lake, but it's shallow overall, they will pull to the outer edges of the points and then they follow the edge of that contour back towards the shallows. They're going to stop on any cover available to them along the way. If your lake has a narrowing section in it where those fish have gathered for winter, they're going to bail out of that to the nearest shallow water bay, the nearest spawning grounds. They're going to make their way. And again, they're going to stop on, I like to call them anomalies, the things that are different along the way. So if it's a long straight ledge, you know, for miles, or even if it's shorter than that, a few hundred yards, but there's a bump on it, they will gather there. They make these moves from anomaly to anomaly to anomaly small scale you pond guys your fish have been sitting out in the middle now they want to go to the shallow side of the lake they're going to stop on the anomalies they're going to stop on a rock on a log 
Somebody kicked a trash can into the water. They will stop on that trash can. That's why you catch so many fish around the cover. Those fish like to be up against something to feed. This transition will take some time. It will go on over weeks. What makes this so fun is that this time of year, these fish are all making the same progression. They're all making the same transition. So as time goes on, the schools get bigger and bigger and bigger because all those fish that were scattered and set out for winter are all making the same move and they're coming together. That's why when we get truly into the pre-spawn, all of a sudden you'll get those days where you get a school fired up and you're just catching them one after another after another. Those are fish that were separated for winter. They've come back together to make a common move back towards the spawning grounds. Pretty simple in that natural lake. It just depends on the size of the lake and how shallow it is, how far those fish had to go for winter, and in turn, how far they have to come back. So, natural lake out of the way. Let's talk river, and then we're going to get to the lowland and highland reservoirs. That's most of the country. River, guys. It's going to depend on how much backwater you have available to you. If your river is pretty straight, deep water, more like a canal where there's just no protection, those fish could be anywhere. If there's any protection, anything that breaks the current, they're going to stack right there. If, you're, if you have natural backwaters, you know, backwater ponds, backwater eddies, old little creek fingers that go off, that get shallow and out of the current, your fish are going straight to them. Anywhere where they can get out of the current into shallower water, where that water will get warmer faster, the fish are going there. Especially if you've had rain coming and you've got some flow coming into that place, those fish are going straight into that flow, not up the main river, up the fingers, the tributaries. They go straight into that stuff, get into that warmer water, feed up, and then ultimately spawn in those backwaters because that flow will stop and they'll be up there in that warm water and they can spawn. That's where your fish are headed. If you've got backwater ponds, I mean, the mouths of those things right now will be incredible. Those little pinch points that leave your main river arm are unbelievable how many fish will gather in those things. But again, if you don't have that, if you've got just a standard river, not a lot of give, nowhere to get out of that current, those fish will gather on any cover that they can, and they just tend to spawn later because they have to wait for the entire river temperature to rise, not just a little backwater piece of it to rise. But those fish are still extremely predictable because you can fish the little corners, the little eddies, lay down trees, logs, anything in that water that will break it up where they can sit protected and still feed and ambush prey. Let's talk about the reservoirs. This is almost everybody. The bottom half of the country, most of you guys are fishing lowland reservoirs. Top half, most of you are fishing highland reservoirs. But there are plenty of exceptions. So listen to the description of the lake and decide which style you are on. Lowland reservoirs. Lowland reservoirs tend to have much larger dams. They might even have a dam on more than one side of the lake because it's a low lying area, fairly flat. So there's not a big pinch point that they can dam off. Typically they'll have to dam several different areas to contain all that water as it spreads. The dams, again, they're large, the lake overall shallower. If your lake has 200, 300 feet of water in it, it's probably not a lowland reservoir. If it's got 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 feet of water in it, it might be. Typically lowland reservoirs are built around rolling hills, not big steep canyons. Low rolling hills, there's a lot of island tops, a lot of fingers, a lot of ledges, maybe arms that go way back up in that have individual humps and points back inside of them. Those are your lowland reservoirs. Reservoirs by nature have some current running through them, especially in the spring and summertime. The fish that you are after, they had pulled out to the outside structure for the winter. They're sitting out on the humps, out on the main lake ledges, main lake points, and those narrowing areas. 
the mouths of big long arms, that's where your fish wintered. They were out there on that rock feeding aggressively. That may be where they still are depending on where you are in the country and how warm it is right now. Now again, none of this for me is based entirely off water temperature. That's why I'm not giving you exact figures. I base it more off of the air because fish, while they follow these trends, they vary a little bit. So it's easier to go off of it like this. If you can go out fishing two days in a row in a hoodie, but you wish that you were in a t-shirt, a day like today where I'm thinking I could almost get away from a t-shirt, that's the period we're talking about. That's where that water is going to start warming up just enough. It's still freezing in the morning. It was 30 here this morning. I had ice on the boat, but this afternoon it's like, I don't know, high 50s. It might even be 60. I mean, it's, it is an unseasonably warm day here today. If you've got those conditions, surface temperatures are rising, especially in the shallow bays, you are at that end of winter beginning, early, early, early beginning of pre-spawn. And I keep emphasizing how early because make no mistake, snow is coming back. I will have snow all over these mountains. We will get iced up. It will get freezing cold. We'll get flooded. That's all still coming. But here we are, end of January, beginning of February, and all of a sudden it's beautiful. So these fish will start the progression. And when winter arrives again, they don't come back. They just settle. They just hunker down and they endure the cold and then it passes and they continue. It has to be extreme for them to backtrack. So as soon as you get a couple of these days, they're making moves. Whether you can catch them or not, they're doing it. So back on track. The fish have been on those outside edges and humps and narrow locations. They are headed into the bays. That's where your fish are. They are not on the main river, not the ones you want to catch. The giants, the females, the pre-spawners, they are in the bays. They are away from the current. They are headed to the flattest, shallowest pockets where they will ultimately spawn, but they are not all the way in the back of those things. They are setting up again on those anomalies. They're going to work the edges of the secondary points going back and if you have humps, they're never even going to go to the shore. They're going to work right up the humps as they head towards the back. But again, don't go all the way to the back when it's like this. Unless you've got incoming flow that's warmer than the main lake, then they go all the way to the back. They run to it and they feed in that muddy water. But if you don't have that, if it's just a beautiful day on your lake, they're going to stay on those outside edges, the ends of the secondary points and the humps, but they're going to progress towards the back. And they're not going to backtrack. They're just going in. And if the weather gets bad, they will stop. When it gets nice again, they will continue moving. That's why they sit on those really good spots. So if you have a row of secondary points going into one of those bays, you look for the one. One comes out and it's nice and flat. Next one, nice and flat. Third one, nice and flat with a rock pile. That's your spot. They sit on the best spots because they might get trapped there and they'd rather be sitting on that rock pile for a week or two feeding up on crawfish or anything that else that comes along rather than out on an exposed point. So they go, this isn't their first rodeo, they go from the best spot to the best spot to the best spot working their way into the backs, into the shallows in that warm water ultimately to spawn. It's very simple. Now this is where these fish are going. We're still going to circle around and talk briefly about how to catch them. We'll also follow this up in a couple days with another video going more in depth on our favorite ways to catch them, but I'm still going to give you some today. Now last, highland reservoirs. What is a highland reservoir? Typically, it's got a really narrow dam. Highland reservoirs or steeper canyons. Deeper water, steep dam, typically not going to have more than one dam. You don't need to bridge it off in a couple different places. Occasionally you will, but typically because they're in deeper canyons, it's just one small dam holds back an incredible amount of water, steep walled with long fingers. And another telltale of a highland reservoir is that those long fingers usually have 
tons and tons of secondary points coming out into them. Lowland reservoirs have more of those rolling contours, not the highland reservoir. Steep, sheer points. You might have long tapering points, but there's a lot of them. Just depends on the style of, or the location where you are. Some lakes that I go to, you'll have those long tapering red mud points. Next one might just be sheer steep shale points. Depends on the reservoir, but still all highland. Highland reservoir fish, there's not a lot of offshore humps and things like that. There might be a few, and if you know where they are, you caught fish on them all winter long. Most of the fish set up on the points and the original creek channel that runs through that reservoir, unless it's too deep. If it's too deep, they're not there. But where it comes in and turns along the shoreline, you get those sheer walls. That was productive this winter, as were those bigger deep water points. The fish were sitting out on the ends of them. So now what are those fish doing? Same as a lowland reservoir, they're headed to the backs of those arms. The difference is that those arms don't warm up quite as quickly as a lowland reservoir because they're deeper all the way to the back. They don't just taper up really quickly. They're deeper all the way to the back so it takes longer to warm up and because your environment is steeper above water also, you tend to have a lot more water coming in in the backs of them, which can really fluctuate and change the environment as well. So your fish will take longer to get to the back. Again, secondary points are key. They're critical. Your fish will revolve around them. They were on the outside stuff. We know that they're headed to the back. They're going to work those secondary points all the way back up those arms. That's what those fish are doing. In one reservoir, it might be a couple hundred yards to the back. If you're in a pond, it might be 50 feet to the back, but I'm still describing your pond. It's deep, it's got a, sh a sheer dam on it, deep water going towards the back, little fingers. In a giant reservoir, it might be five or six or eight or 12 miles to the back, but your fish will still, in all of those, work their way up the secondary points and the best fish will take the best spots. Look for the secondary points that have the deepest water access and that have some sort of anomaly. Maybe they come out and they've got a little kick on them. We've got a little high spot, rock pile. Maybe there's stumps down there. Before they, they built that dam, maybe they came in and logged and left the stumps. So you find the point that's got some stumps on it or laid down trees, logs, whatever it might be. The points with the anomalies, again, same exact scenario, will hold those fish the longest and will hold the biggest fish. Now, all of these different kinds of lakes, all these different environments, a wave of small males is the first fish to the back. The small males go first, females are chasing that. Everything is chasing that, really. So if you're working your way back and you're catching nothing but little rat, tiny males, smaller than the normal male in your lake. So say you're on a lake where the average male is a pound and a half, and all of a sudden you're catching three quarter pounders. Or you're on a, a lake like Clear Lake where we're incredibly blessed and a male could be anywhere from two to four pounds. You know, they're big males, all of a sudden you're catching one, one and a half pound males. They're just smaller than the norm. That tells you you're a little bit ahead. Back it up a couple of points. Backtrack, fish a little bit deeper. Maybe those males were up shallow. They were up in five to 10 feet of water. Back up a couple of points and try that 15 to 30 feet of water, or 15 to 40 feet of water until you start catching fish again and then you've got it. Turns out those better fish were sitting at 35 feet. Or maybe they were two points back, still sitting a little shallow, but a couple points farther towards the main lake. What's awesome about this whole entire thing that we're talking about is that it's consistent. If you're in a reservoir and you figure out that they're sitting between the second and third point from the main river or from the main lake, they're just a couple points in, you can go arm to arm to arm to arm to arm and you will find those fish on all of them. The only exception is that if the next point in 
is just gorgeous with beautiful cover on it, they'll move to that one. But otherwise, they'll be on the same spot in every arm because all those fish are making the same move. Out here on a big natural lake, when those fish are coming up shallow, they're working their way towards those bays, they'll be the same distance offshore in all of them. This is the time of year that you can build patterns. You can run that water even in a pond. If you figure out that the fish have left the dam and they're running, you're catching them 15 or 20 feet off the bank, well now you know if you've got a dozen good pieces of cover that you've gotten snagged on before and they're all about the same distance out there, just run along. Don't cast at the stuff in between. Go right to those sweet spots, catch those fish. You can apply this anywhere. The patterning is key. This time of year is not a time of year to slow fish. We're just coming out of that winter. Again, if those storms show back up, it can get bad again in a hurry. Those fish will lock down, you'll wanna finesse them. But when they're up and they're making the moves and they're feeding, reaction baits are key. This is where we're cranking, A-rigging, lipless bait, deep crank, square bill. I mean, cranking all the way around. All those different options will work. What else, what am I, let me see what I have on my deck. Lipless, square bill, A-rig, deep crank, and a glide bait. That is literally what I have on my deck today because I've been out fishing. Power fishing your way through these things works. You can cover water faster. You can find these fish much more quickly doing that. If you slow fish and you're working your way in those secondary points, it could take all day to finally run into some fish. Well, now you're at the end of the day, you don't have time to go run the pattern. But if you get up and just crank and crank and crank and crank and catch one, and then pick up something else, pick up an A-ring, catch another one. Well, if you want a worm, you can, but you also know where you were in the arm. It's time to fire up your motor, go to the next arm, go straight to the same place, try again. There's another one, now you have a pattern. You can take those patterns and run them all the way into the spring, all the way into the spawn, just by progressing farther back into the shallows or up the arms. It's really that simple. Now, we'll follow this video up in a couple of days with another one talking details on the baits, why we choose the baits we choose, colors that we choose, how to fish, and we'll get more in depth for you. But even today, down in the video description, I'm gonna link, I said the styles of baits, but I'll give you two or three of my favorites from each one because you wanna go out this time of year and fish with confidence. You don't wanna go out there, one, not knowing where the fish are. You know where to look, but you haven't found them yet. And then with baits that you don't have confidence in, that combination can be brutal. If you don't find fish right away, it'll drive you insane. Your confidence will crash. So we'll at least tell you what our confidence baits are. If we were in your shoes, because we've gone around the country and we've done this over and over and over, we know what works. We know what we take when it's time to go do it. We'll share that with you as well. Guys, I hope this video helps you. You can do this. No matter what kind of fishery you are on, the fish, this is one of the best times of year. They're predictable, they're grouped up, and they weigh the most that they will weigh all year. The females are bulking up. Right now, they're about to start feeding, and it's gonna carry all the way up until they go to spawn. This is the time when you can catch giants, so don't slow down. Go hard, find those fish, build those patterns, and you will have a blast all the way into the spring. I hope this video helps. If it did, hit the like button, subscribe to our channel if you haven't already, turn on those notifications so we, you know when new videos are coming, and we'll talk to you soon. Thank you.